Hi, my name is John Howes, and this is Dispatch. Uh, Dispatch is a global modulation matrix for Ableton Live uh, 10 and 11, and I've been working on it for on and off about six months. Um, I'm really excited to show you about this. I think it's a really interesting device. Um, if you've ever been working with like live LFOs or modulation devices in the past, usually towards the end of a project, you end up with a bunch of LFOs scattered around a project, nested in racks. Um, the whole thing becomes kind of like hard to manage, uh, hard to organize. It's difficult to see like what's going on in different parts of your project. Um, so this kind of is designed to consolidate all of the modulation, all the stuff that goes underneath the project that creates all the movement, put it all into one device, make it really easy to use, make it really easy to uh, see where all the signals are being sent, and also add some new kind of possibilities for different things that you can do with those modulation signals. Um, so before we get into that, I'm just going to quickly walk you around this demo project, which is included when you buy a uh, dispatch. Um, it's quite simple on the Ableton side. We just have one bass sound, which is loaded into a sampler. We have a chord pad sound, which is loaded into another sampler. Uh, we have a drum rack with four different voices here. Um, we have one more voice here, which is just some like clicks. Um, and then this is just me recording this stuff. We also have two sends. We have um, a big reverb on one send and a delay on the other send. And I'll hit play and you can hear what this sounds like. So all the sequencing besides these two MIDI clips is done by dispatch. Uh, you'll see that these sequences running on the bass and the pad are actually pretty simple. It's just like C played at different octaves. Um, and the same for the bass. The bass is literally just like yeah, one note. Um, the loops are kind of like offset so that you get this sort of like phase and pattern sort of thing. Basically it doesn't repeat too often. But all the movement and everything that you hear is actually coming from Dispatch. So let's open up Dispatch and take a look. I've got it on my master channel here. Uh, so there's two views. We have the matrix view, which is this view. And we have the grid view, which is this view. Uh, I'm going to focus on the matrix view first. So. The source of the modulation for this plugin is selected using this here. We have four different types of modulators and we have four slots for those modulators. So we have A, B, C and D. We have ring, pulse, slope and external input. Um, just to start with the external input one, that allows you to connect any, um, any of your favourite like modulation devices. So say for example you really like the live LFO, you can patch the live LFO into dispatch and then you get all the other features of dispatch included but played alongside this, this live LFO. I'll get to what those are later. But there's some more interesting things that we can do to expand the functionality of those LFOs. Uh, so the first modulator that we have here is called Ring. And Ring is two sine waves. Um, we have the carry frequency here, the mod frequency here, and then the amount selects how much of the Ring modulation is brought in. I actually have the amount here controlled by an envelope. And I believe it's this one here, yeah. So. There's a couple of samples here, and whenever they're triggered, this envelope fires, and this envelope will uh, set that amount from 100 all the way down to zero. Uh, I've got the similar thing happening on this here, so whenever there's a kick drum, um, whenever there's a kick drum, like the rate of one of the LFOs gets really fast and then slows down. And by doing making these sorts of connections, like this is kind of like the idea behind dispatches, you have some kind of like one event here which triggers another event here, which triggers another event here, which comes back to the start. You have these kind of feedback loops of modulation. Um, that's kind of the thing that I've been exploring a lot on like modular synths and things, and it's kind of nice to bring it to Ableton. Um, some of those techniques, to bring some of those techniques over. So, yeah, so we have four modulators. These two have been like modulated by other modulation devices, like these envelopes here. Next up, we have the matrix mixer, and the matrix mixer lets you like root any of these signals. So like we have A, B, C, and D, and then these are all being sent to like the fil filter frequency, so we can like bring in and out this modulation here. Um, one thing actually, to get a better idea of like the signals that are being generated, we can press this CPU toggle here. And what that'll do is turn on like this really CPU intensive visual mode, um, but it shows kind of like what all the, all the modulation is doing in that moment. So I'll turn it on here and you can take a look. So you see over these dials, you can see like the actual how all of the modulators are moving, and like if we start to bring one in, like, you can see where it is in its cycle just on the back of these uh, dials. You see it kind of melts my PC, so I'm going to turn that off for now. Um, so yeah, so that's the modulation modulation sources with the modulation matrix. 
One sec. <clears throat> so, like I was saying before, one of the ideas is to create these kinds of like feedback loopy sort of modulation things. We also want to keep everything organized. But I also want to want to try and take the modulation that we have in Ableton and make it work with any other device um, that we might have. So if you have like a modular sim flow, you have some like MIDI gear, you can connect it up to this directly from the interface of this batch. So if I turn on audio and CV outputs, I get a list here of all the audio channels in Ableton plus all of my external outputs. Um, and what that lets us do is we can take a modulated signal from one of these sources, or we can take one of these submixes here, and we can send it directly out, um, which we, you can then patch into like your modular, you've got Euro rack stuff, into any like semi-modular stuff. Anything that takes control voltage, you can connect it to this directly. I think like in the future, one thing I'd like to do is to add in like the reverse of that, so we can take modulation signals from like Euro rack and hardware stuff and bring those back in to Ableton plugging them into this matrix, start building some new connections uh, around our project based on what we have going on in the hardware side. Um, another thing that's kind of influenced by like that modular workflow is this MIDI note output. Um, so when I turn this on, these drums here will kick in. And what's happening is the drums are being fed by the... So what happens is, each modulator, you see it going like up or down here. So this threshold, if you imagine that threshold like flipped on its axis, so like it's vertical instead, and we turn it up or down, it's basically like turning like a level up or down on that um, on that modulation thing. And whenever like the, the sine wave like crosses that threshold, it goes like bang and sends out a MIDI note. So here it's been sent to this, we can route it to like different audio, like to any um, MIDI track. Like this is like a new Live 11 thing, so we can send it to like, we can send it to the bass, we can send it to the pad, I've got it sent to the drums here. And so yeah, that's like, these sound waves are moving. Every time they cross that threshold, we get a MIDI note. We set the MIDI note number here, um, and then we can turn it on and off here. So I think C1 is like the kick, which also triggers this envelope. That envelope goes back, gets back, sent back in to the, uh, to modulate the modulator. And then yeah, you've got this kind of like chaotic feedback loop going on. Um, so yeah, there's also this like one button here which says 16N, and what that does is it lets us like quantize. Um, so like that kick is being sent, I think from here maybe. So if I turn this right up, you'll see we get like more kicks. What's happening here is like the pulse generator. We have like 128, 128th notes. We've got 32 of them up and then 32 of them down. And every time that changes, we get a MIDI note. Uh, so I'll change this back to 16. But yeah, you hear like now that, that kick just hit and it stopped, like that envelope went and like that's what sped up the um, sine wave oscillators. Uh, cool. So yeah, once we are kind of, once we're like, once we have these like four CV uh, buses, we can like use this CV processing section to like morph those signals further. So like I said before, we have that pulse generator, which is just like an on and off static, on and off um, square wave sort of thing. We can use the rise and fall to like smooth those edges. So instead of just going like on and off, it goes like up and then down and then up and like a tr almost like a triangle wave. And um, there's an offset as well. So you can like set like, so if it's like going like this, you can set this point so it's like, uh, that probably doesn't make sense, but I hope, I hope you kind of understand. Um, if you're familiar with strokes, um, the pattern system is in this as well. So we have four pattern slots, A, B, C, and D. Uh, the difference here is that we can morph between them using like this X, Y grid. So A is here, B is here, C is here, D is here. And we can like use a mouse to like basically control every parameter in the whole um, device. Uh, that's kind of like geared towards doing that performance stuff with it. Um, it has been like quite heavily beta tested, like thanks to everyone that tested it. So hopefully like it shouldn't be too scary to use it live. Um, if gigs ever happen again. Um, so yeah, that's that's basically like everything on this screen here uh, explained roughly. Um, we can uh, change like the layout, like change the which bits of the patch with which bits of this UI we're viewing using these two buttons here. Um, so we can just view, view the much later as just the matrix makes a or like the whole thing altogether. Um, so there's one other view in Dispatch, uh, which is like doing a lot of this other modulation stuff, and that is the groove view.
So the grid view works very similar to the matrix mixer. Like, uh, let me just turn on the CPU toggle again. So you can see here that like the shape of like A, B, C, and D, those sources. I'll bring I'll bring this to like this reduced view here. This is kind of like how the workflow is intended to work with them. Um, well, the reason that I made it this small view with the modulators is, is so that it plays well nicely with this like grid view. So we set our destinations. Um, I've got like 16 destinations already mapped here. We can set the range, and then we can like introduce the modulation by like bringing in these. So this is almost like a little light matrix mixer in itself. Um, we look along the row, and we can add in like a bit of A, a bit of B, a bit of C, a bit of D, uh, and then we have like an amount control. So we can turn all the modulation on and off using that. Um, so that's basically how the device works. Um, I'm just going to explain like a couple more of the techniques that I used to, to just for making this demo. Just a few like Ableton centric things. Um, so you'll see on dispatch that one of these somewhere. Where is it? Pitch. So this pitch here, I believe, is uh, for this uh, chord here. So what I've done is I've got this like I've got this like C playing on different octaves. And then I'm taking that C note, that's coming in like on the on the pitch here, and then this pitch object is like offsetting that. And the the way in which it's offset, like the transposition is set by D, so like the slope generate here. So you see if I like speed this up, like you see like, the pitch just starts to get faster down here. Um, so that's kind of what's happening there. That's like one technique that I use for like we can use like we can use dispatch to kind of like generate these like pitch transposition signals and that can kind of lead to like the sort of like generative composition where you know like we're literally just pressing like the same note on different octaves and then able and, and dispatch are kind of doing all this like transposition and stuff um another layer on top of that is that we can use the chord device and do the same do a similar technique um except rather than offsetting the notes like by transposing them it adds like a second one on and when those two things play together you basically have like one thing going like this one thing going like this and then they i don't know it kind of like gener generates like chords obviously like you need to put like a scale thing after it to like make it sound good um but yeah it's a good way to get like just these sort of like interesting like chord progressions and things like that i was about to say random but like th this is the thing like it's not random at all like everything that's happening is happening there's no like random generation in this at all and I kind of want to keep it like pure like that um I kind of think that like I mean I have some like idea about why I think this but these like the, what's generating this here is like a fixed system and it become if you listen to it for long enough like this someone has been playing in the background for a while if you listen to it long enough like you can start to like predict the patterns in it like the combination of like all these up modulators is what is causing the output of this um, track and it's not random things aren't happening just like picking that random number there's like no random number generation at all this is all like systems based music um, so if you like open this on your machine and hit play it's gonna sound the same as it did on mine there's no like yeah there's no like magic happening at all it's literally just the result of like crossing over a bunch of modulation signals and like picking out at various points and wiring it up to stuff um, and that's something that I want to keep like so like these four like um, modulation sources are quite simple and I'm gonna I plan to add some more but I probably won't be adding like a random one because yeah I prefer this sort of like system space like chaotic style of music where yeah you can if you listen to it long enough like you can start to hear the patterns repeat like our brains are really good at detecting patterns we can kind of like if you put like a thing like this on long enough like you'll start to hear like the slopes of like these um, modulation signals um, it'll start to like it, it's not just like a purely randomly generated thing um, yeah everything's happening for a reason uh, same, same with like strokes or whatever um, so yeah besides that I've just uh, one one other like little technique that I want to show you is um, something that I learned from when I was using strokes a lot um, so so yeah like dispatch is generating like these MIDI notes here C1, C sharp etc these get sent into this drum rack and on this drum rack here we've got an instrument rack and that instrument rack contains two different samples and so like everything that's coming into this rack is like C1 and then that gets like put in that plays the C3 note on like this sampler so what I've done is I've limited the key range so that we just have C just have this one sample play on C C and then this one sample play on C sharp now C sharp uh, like isn't playing usually so what we do is we use the random device put it into alt mode 
and set the choices to two. And what that'll do is it'll go, every time like it plays a C, the next note will be the C sharp, then it'll go back to C. And it'll flip between these two notes. And you can do this with like, you can set up like 30 different samples with this and have them like step through like round robin style one at a time. Uh, alternatively you could make it just run randomly, but like I said, I, I'm not particularly like a fan of that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, that's like, this is a way of like extending like, like you might just be getting like C1 sent out from dispatch, but like if you do some additional processing on it, you can actually make it spiral off into some other thing. And we could can, like set up like dispatch to modulate some of this stuff as well. And yeah, we can lead like lead down these levels of like algorithmic composition or whatever generative stuff. Um, it's kind of like what this is designed to be used for. Um, so yeah, we've got like a really simple project here, just like two sounds, a couple of drums, a couple of clicks, tons of modulation signals that are like driving it all, making it all move around. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this kind of walkthrough talking video of how to use it. Um, if there's any other like ideas for like things you'd like to make to expand on or anything like that, yeah, just let me know. Um, yeah, hope really enjoyed making this. Really excited to like make some tunes of it over the next few weeks. Um, hope you like it too. So yeah, thanks for watching.